In this video, we will look at the characteristic properties of amino acids. They form Zwitter ions, an ion with a positive and negative charge but are electrically neutral. They have an isoelectric point at which they don't move in an electric field. They have a buffer action, they are amphoteric, therefore they can react with small amounts of acids and bases to minimize the change in pH. So we'll start by looking at Zwitter ions. A Zwitter ion is a dipolar ion. It has a positive and negative charge on the same group of atoms, but overall the molecule is neutral. So we start with the structure of a two amino acid. We have the amino group here and the carboxyl group here and the R group, which is different for every amino acid. What happens next is this hydrogen atom on the carboxyl group goes over to the amino group. And that leaves us with a positive charge on the amino group and a negative charge on the carboxyl group but overall the molecule is neutral. Next we look at the isoelectric point. The pH determines the net charge of the amino acid. The isoelectric point is the pH at which the amino acid is electrically neutral. That means it has no net charge. At pH above the isoelectric point, amino acids have a negative charge. At pH below the isoelectric point, amino acids have a positive charge. Table 19 in the data booklet gives the pH of the isoelectric point of some amino acids. So here's an example. We have alanine. The symbol is ALA and here's the structural formula and the pH of the isoelectric point is 6.0. So we'll have a look at the structure of alanine at pH 3.0, pH 6.0 and pH 9.0. At pH 3.0, which is below the pH of the isoelectric point, the amino acid is positively charged. At pH 6, which is the isoelectric point, there is no overall charge on the amino acid because it's the Zwitter ion. And at pH 9, the charge on the amino acid is negative because pH 9 is above the pH of the isoelectric point. Amino acids are amphoteric. That means they can act as acids or bases. In this top example here, we have the amino acid and it's donating one of these hydrogen ions to this OH negative ion. Therefore, the amino acid is acting as a bronsted Lowry acid and the OH negative is the bronsted Lowry base. In the bottom example, the hydronium ion, which is the H3O plus, is donating a proton to the amino acid. So the amino acid is accepting the proton. It's acting as a bronsted Lowry base. So amino acids can act as acids, as in this first example here, or they can act as bases in the second example. Because amino acids are amphoteric, that means they can act as buffers. So amino acids can act as buffers in the human body. They can resist a change in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. So here are two equations which show how amino acids can act as buffers in the human body. Just like the previous example we looked at, in the first equation, this amino acid is acting as a bronsted Lowry acid by donating a proton to the OH negative. And in the bottom example, the amino acid is accepting a proton from the H3O plus ion. So therefore, it's acting as a bronsted Lowry base. 